Good morning. Welcome to the Contemporary Issues class. We have about 150 people here today for the topic of old politicians. What are the pros and cons of having older leaders? Is it experience? Is it good when they get up to the podium and freeze and can't speak? What are the pros and cons of our leaders today and older experienced folks and uh, so we will talk about all that from a Christian perspective and be kind toward older folks, right? Because we're all getting there, where, however you define it. Uh, well, I want to welcome many first-time visitors, including Shannon Butler. Rev. Jerry's wife is with us today. So nice to have you here, Shannon, and, and anyone else. Nice to have you here, too. Welcome. welcome. Are you from out of town, or... Down the, road and the train. Down the road, good. Nice to have you here. Well, I'm Steve, and we are called the Contemporary Issues class. We talk about social issues and book reviews and all kinds of good stuff from a Christian perspective. So today, this is our topic, but first, we want to do our usual announcements. Uh, Zoomers, nice to have Joe and Susan and Clark and others here. Please mute yourself on the lower left corner of your screen when you're not speaking, and we are recording this for future playback on YouTube for those who cannot be here today. And as we discuss old politicians today, please be kind to both sides of the political spectrum. We like to not attack either side too harshly because it's against our values to do so. With that, um, any other announcements? Vicky and I just got back from Cabo San Lucas last night for we were there all week with our grandkids, and it was beautiful, and we walked on the beach. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. Yes, it was a good time to go. Our feet were in the sand. Went on a whale-watching boat, saw one tail of a whale, and that was it. So you never know what you're going to get. That's right. For all we knew, it was only a tail swimming in the ocean. What did you want to say? Um, Carrie, uh, Carrie Forst and I were talking at one time. Um, first of all, I want to thank Alice and Ron for hosting a wonderful <laughs> New Year's Eve party. It was wonderful. Um, and uh, But we were talking about how much everybody seems to enjoy getting together. And I was just wanting to throw out, because Carrie and I were talking about the possibility of having a class potluck like once a quarter and maybe just having it here in the classroom, you know? Um, so if you all are interested in that, I might look at some dates and throw them out and see what you guys think. And it just brings something and we'll just have a maybe once a quarter potluck and a, you know, visit after class and stuff. So if everybody's kind of open to that, we'll try it for the new year. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other announcements? Plugs for classes or trips or anything. It was 70 to 72. It was a little too cool for the grandkids to swim in the pool much. So you never know what you're going to get there. But it was beautiful. It's it's a lovely place. Okay, we're going to jump into this so we can talk about this topic. And I want to give credit to Gene Dawson, my fellow presenter today. For of course, the suggestion to do this, he gave me this article uh, that was reprinted in the Denver Post called Our Gerontocracy. Why are U.S. politicians so old and why do they want to stay in office? Money, Money Eric said. And this article, I'm, and power and ego. And uh, I will review quickly here the highlights of this article and we'll discuss. And Gene will talk to us a little bit more because Gene is a retired gerontologist. How would you describe what you did, Gene? <laughs> Tell us what you did, uh, professional. I'm aging. <laughs> and I study such, and I practice such, and now I'm living such. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay, I want to just uh, go quickly through this article and tell you about some of this. So just keep some of this in mind in your questions in your comments, and we'll come back to uh, comment a little bit more. The article says, uh, Joe Biden, now 80 years old, is the first octogenarian to occupy the Oval Office. 
and his rival, Donald Trump, is 77. A university poll in October, a couple months ago, showed that three quarters of U.S. voters believe Biden is too old for office, and half of the voters believe Trump is too old for office at 77. These two men are more than a decade and a half above the average American retirement age and are not talking at all about retiring from politics. Ronald Reagan left office at age 77. He was the oldest person to ever have served to that point. Trump left office at 74, making him the third oldest. The Census Bureau says the median age in America is, anybody want to guess? 56, 72, no, 38.9 years. Yes, the median age, not the retirement age, the median age. Yeah. When you line up the young and the old, 39 years old. The average age of the U.S. House of Representatives is, anybody want to guess? 58. The average age of U.S. Senators. Yes? 92, Rock said. No, a little older than the House. 64. That's right. And there is increasing media coverage of what we're calling our governing class gerontocracy. <laughs> Now, Colorado's delegation ranges from John Hickenlooper, 71 years old, to Lauren Boebert, 36 years old. Yes. There's something to be said for old age. There's something to be said for old age and experience, Linda says. That's right. Um, <laughs> uh, House leader Chuck Schumer is 72. And Mitch McConnell, Senate leader, is 81. And he is the one that has got a lot of publicity lately for uh, freezing in front of the cameras three times and having to be led off by his uh, assistants. Bernie Sanders is 81 and hasn't mentioned retirement at all. A local pharmacist on Capitol Hill made headlines a few years ago when he revealed he was fill, filling prescriptions for Alzheimer's medications for a number of members of Congress. Every one of the 20 oldest members of Congress is at least 80, and this is the third oldest House and Senate uh, ever in the United States. Um, but the views of aging are changing as the lifespans increase. We no longer equate retirement with death coming quickly after. Many people are very comfortable and efficient in uh, mental capacity after retirement, of course. Um, so people also are re more reluctant to retire these days because their entire identity is tied to their jobs. They may not have hobbies that they want or feel comfortable doing in retirement. So the combination of having no interest and their entire identity being tied to their jobs leads them to not want to retire. Another theory is ego, especially for lawmakers. It says they feel they're indispensable. They're, they are told they're the only ones who can possibly do the job and maintain their political uh, majorities on each side uh, of the Congress. Power is also an aphrodisiac. They feel like they can get things done and they are very powerful. And if someone new comes in, they won't be able to achieve what the long-term person has done. But these, this has led to calls for age limits for federal elected office holders, including mental competency testing for the president. Nikki Haley has called for federal uh, competency testing and for elected leaders who are 75 and older. A September 23 poll showed huge majorities of Americans support competency testing. That way the public would know who was sharp and who was not. And uh, also having the, uh, should 
have the grace to retire as when John F. Kennedy, the nation's second youngest president, said we should be able to pass the torch to new generations of America. So Amy is looking younger today than it did because people are living longer and healthier, but also polls show that people in America would prefer people in their 50s and 60s to be governing from their political centers of power. Okay, should we have a few comments before we go to your presentation? Is that okay? Okay, what do you think about that? Who is okay with Biden being over 80? Are we okay yeah. with that? He's not, and some people are saying, I'm a little bit, but I'm also concerned. Yes, I Anne. I think it's so much his age or anybody's age as to the competency. Yeah. You know, I mean, now I know people that are 80, 97, 98, and they're yeah. sharp as a tack. Uh, Henry Kissinger. Well, we've got Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. Yeah. I don't think that yeah. with Joe, it's a case of age. I think it's his competency, and it's not his fault. Yeah. He just doesn't <laughs> have yes. it. And there have been stories that Trump has been making increasing number of errors, too, about which city he's in, exactly. who he is taught to. And so the, there are allegations of mental incompetency on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Steve-O. There are there's a, um, there are people that believe that you are what you were when, and your most influential years were the time from year 13 until 22, mm -hmm. and the concerns that you're dealing with at that time. Absolutely. And so what people that are younger feel is that the older generation doesn't have a clue about how fast things are moving right now, especially with medicine, artificial intelligence, and other things like that. They don't even know how to address it. They don't even know how to. Okay, they don't expect to express it or utter it or anything else like that because okay. they've never been experienced. So, so while they, they have experience in some areas, they, they are they, not they in others. Reason and stuff like that that they just don't understand the rest of the I agree. Yeah. 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 That's a very good point. That's why we need grandchildren in Congress. <laughs> no, really. I'm really concerned about competency, but if I could also add, a succession plan seems to be like what any good business would provide yeah, as well. Yeah. Where's the succession plan? I don't know. So that's that's another thing that really bothers me. If everyone else seems to think that it's a good idea in you know whatever business or other you know entities that you know we have, then they should do that in government as well. Oh, that's what the vice president. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stand up over here. Jim. Well, it seemed to me, at, at least as far as the presidency is concerned, that in the decision of this, uh, of deciding uh, if, if you're going to accept an old person as the president, that the issue of who is the vice president becomes a lot more important. Yeah. yeah. Because yes. uh, yeah. Uh, one thing that old people tend to do is to die. <laughs> yes, yes, it could be very suddenly. That's right. And so it seemed to me that that decision, and maybe even as far down as the speakership of the House, because that is even a possibility. Okay, very good. Any other quick comments before I turn over to Jean? Mental, mental competency is one thing, but you also need critical thinking skills. Yeah. Yeah. And quite frankly, all of us can say, I know people my age and above and below, you feel like asking them, when are you going to grow up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they're, they're not there. They've never uh, developed uh, what I call good, mature, critical thinking skills. They're still growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Then. Well, <laughs> yep, we all know true. old people who are 40. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, that are old. Yeah. Yes. In every in our, in a great way. But for Good point. Number okay. 40. One more comment and then we'll go to Jean. Yes. One question. Uh, how confident are the competency tests that are used for medical professionals? Yeah. You're confident or you're not confident when it's not really a good competency test. Yes. Can you imagine if it's uh, released, people will be 
analyzing how did you do on this part of the test and the other part of the test and all of that. Okay, Deb. The test should encompass the whole spectrum of age, not just the elderly, right? I mean, it should encompass ethics, morality, Right. All <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It has to cover all of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got some moral digits out there. That's right. That's right. Okay, G, tell us a little, or Shannon, go ahead, and then we'll go to G. Well, I'll just piggyback on the competency. It should be a civics test. And it should be all ages. So you should be able to understand the government that you're seeking to serve before you. Um, are allowed to serve. And then I also just want to point out these are elected officials. So right. if you don't like their age, there's a real simple solution for that. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yep. The voting, <laughs> as we are going to hear shortly from the Supreme Court about the voting booth. Okay, Jean, what about aging today? Is Are the views of aging changing? Are we accepting old, more older folks in leadership positions? Tell us about how would your intelligence you think about this? There's Johnny, a magic man. Welcome to the night show, today show. I'm sweating. It's okay. You got a you got a geron here. That means a what is that mean? old man. Gerontology? Oh yes. Yeah. And for women out there, women, yes. Um, uh, an old crone. What does what does that mean? Is, is, is that a dirty word? Is that pejorative? Uh, Old crone. Have you heard this? Yeah, you gotta have, uh, help me on that. Who is a, if somebody would recall you an old crone? Would it be an insult? Well, that means a very wise old woman. Well, you know, like old wives' tales, medicine women. Wise. Oh, you folks, I'm falling in love with the audience here. Uh, we, you got a couple of sunflowers here. Now, what's the significance of? Couple of sunflowers. Who are sunflowers? Young people. Using that force? Young people? No. You you can take the guy out of Kansas, but you can't take the Kansas out of the guy. <laughs> or a couple of Jayhawkers. Or sometimes I'll, play. Oh, okay. I'll blame it on my heritage here. The reason I'm sweating, if you look at my penmanship up there, this is an aging test for an 86 year old. <laughs> That's true. I apologize. I ran out of gas. I ran out of gas as far as the fluid in the marker the markers. But those are some bullet points. But uh, I did win a, a uh, when I was a child, Miss um, Kettle's Penmanship Award. But now look at that. I don't. You blame it on decrements of age or whatever. It's just lousy penmanship. But anyway, yes, some bullet spelling. points. Your spelling's good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Need reinforcement. Before I, I don't know whether or not to take the prosecution or the defense on this article, because um, darn good article, very timely. I mean, everybody's talking about this. I, I've been influenced by your other Ed McMahon and Ron there. Books, I only write two, but at least I, I run at the mouth too much here. I want to make sure I pass these around first. The first one I want to share with you, because it's, Written by a 92 year old. You know, if you have credibility, you get in your 90s. 80s are okay, but you get the 90 year olds, you, they really have credibility when they talk. This lady is Marion Downs, and she's local because she's a, she's a, a PhD up here at the Anschutz uh, Medical Center, University of Colorado, and she's in the Department of Audiology. And they used to laugh at her. This is, this is what it takes. So my experience has been that feisty, feisty older women. Uh, and oftentimes be much more effective. I spent some time with Maggie Kuhn uh, of the Great Panthers back in Philadelphia. And uh, the, they can play the mother role and they can get attention and they can work on men in very strategic ways uh, because of that. And uh, I'm not telling women here anything they don't already know, but, but be that it may, uh, she has everything about uh, sexuality and aging to exercise, to myths and stereotypes and health. And she poo poos, Steve. She poo poos this matter. It's all in the genes. Uh, that is my name, Gene. But uh, be that as it may, she said, uh, My parents died at 61. So that's essentially a lot of hogwash because it's lifestyle and what you do, you eat, keep active, et cetera, and so forth. Very delightful and quite a sense of humor. 
which my experience in working with elders in a, in a variety of situations is, is such a great helpful medicine. You have, have some humans. But anyway, she's, her book is Shut Up and Live. You Know How by Marion Downs. <laughs> the other one I thought you might be interested in because uh, this is right for all sorts of opinions. And, and I'm, I'm overwhelmed when I'm around experts because all of us are experts in this room. And I'm just looking at you because you all, we, that's one thing that we all have in common. Theology may differ and, and uh, politics and so forth, but we all have a slant of perspective on aging. And a social science kind of guy like me, I just groove on hearing people talk about their experiences and how they're interpreting this human experience that we all go through and we all have it in common. Now, Gene Cohen, for a number of years, was the uh, director of the Institute on Aging back in Washington. He was with the National Institute of Health. He's an MD and he's PhD. And he has some very fascinating neuroscience, Ron, you'll like this, uh, in particular, uh, on imaging of brains and young people and old people and findings, et cetera. It's called the mature mind. The positive power of the aging brain. I have to read this periodically because I begin to get down on myself. I begin to think old and begin to act accordingly. And this is a good pepper upper for those of you who have any of those moments of despondency. Uh, not that you do, but it's called a mature mind, Gene Cohen. Oh my. Steve, when I look at all the topics, we've had in this class. I don't think we've touched, I, th I think I have to stop at, start at this at the, at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to be on the offense here. I'm going to be on the uh, defense, not the pro prosecution here. Um, because this is one of the isms. We've, we've talked about sexism. We've talked about the ableism, people with handicaps, uh, genderisms, uh, there are a lot of isms out there, but have we, I don't think we've talked about ageism. What does that mean? What does that mean? Because I have experts out here, uh, experienced folks at the whole lifespan here, because we have not just the, uh, uh, the older crew, we have a mixed, we have a mixed audience. I want to make sure I say that. Um, is ageism a reality? What is ageism? Steve is asking the question. I used to debate in Kansas in high school, and uh, you had to look at both sides of the issue and, and uh, talk out of both sides of your mouth, and uh, I still do that sort of a thing. But the uh, uh, first thing we would do, definition of terms. So I want to start with ageism because that involves our culture, our socialization, um, what we've been exposed to, what we see, what our parents were like, our relatives, role models, what's on the internet, TV, etc. What is ageism? Need help. What is ageism? I think of it as a negative bias against mm -hmm. yeah. older. Would you say that there would be stereotypes? No. involved, if there's a bias. Yeah. Well, first of all, do you buy that? Is there a bias today? Yes. yes. Anybody say no? Hands up. Anybody say no? I don't say no, but I say that I think it exists on both sides. I think if you're too young, there could also be a bias as well as if you're perceived as Would you say that again? <laughs> I think it, it can work both ways. I have experienced ageism in my, or I had in my 20s working for a corporate organization, Free to Lay. I was perceived as not being able to handle certain responsibilities because of my young age. And then it also exists on the other end that people's abilities are maybe minimized or discounted because of their older age. And that could be any age. Oh, Maggie Cooper would love you. No, she, was, she was in her early or late seventies, early mid seventies, right? Just you know, the youthful, youthful aging. Uh, her coalition was old and young because they're both disenfranchised. There are not not enough experience, too much experience. 
you've had a Charlie, uh, or you're not old enough, Charlie, you know, both sides. So she would ban the coalition for projects and social action, uh, action efforts. She was an elder in the Presbyterian Church, as you remember, U.S. of A. And uh, she'd hammer away at the establishment, and she, and, and, and she would... She was an advocate for of, uh, intergenerational living and paid. She was outrageous in a sense, but but she was trying to make a point. Uh, ageism uh, is not partial. It can afflict teenagers and it can afflict the, the old old. Not the young couple because they're so sexy pretty much, but the old old. <laughs> So that's that was her effectiveness. Yeah, Maggie Coon, Great Panthers, if you remember that. Ageism. What do you see in the way of ageism on TV, cards, dating, food, picking hairdos? What's appropriate, not appropriate? <laughs> to tint or not to tint or not? Yeah. Be natural or yeah, right. Oh, what, yeah. come on, what's been your experience, either in business and family? Uh, what you see here? Yes, yes. There's quite a bit of ageism in the hospitals. Hospitals. I, I had that experience. Um, I broke my hip, and they look how old you are. Yeah. And she, the nurse in the in the emergency room, but she wasn't the nurse; she was the PA. So she was a young little snotty thing. Ageism. <laughs> 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 Oh, they didn't, you know, get along with it. No, I'm real active. So she said to me, you're going to have to stay two to four days, and then you're going to have to go to a, um, a rehab center. I said, look, Mr. <laughs> that is not happening. And she walked away. And so she doesn't know me. Yeah. I go to Silver Sneakers. The doctor told me I could go home the next day because I told him I, I exercise all the time. But in the hospital, the nurses too, they treat you just because you're over a certain age as you're like feeble or you, you have a walker or this and that. So I think the hospitals are bad, not the doctors. Because they, you know, they get to know the your patients and stuff. Oh, no. But I think all the nurses are. Uh, I mean, they were even in my room and stuff. They were glad to see when I went home. <laughs> you know, she's telling it to us straight. That's been my experience in hospitals too. I was a director of uh, senior behavioral health over here. Highlands Behavioral Health was once uh, Columbine Behavioral Health, and I was in charge of the senior behavioral health program. And I had to reprimand my staff because sometimes they, when uh, somebody was being admitted, well, we've got another Jerry. We've got another Jerry. I said, no, we have an older adult that's coming in as a patient. I had to, had to remind them that it can be very blatant. You're quite right. That's been my experience, too. And I think you're being generous as far as the docs are concerned. Some docs are with it. Other docs are very pejorative. And I, I've had to talk my own uh, 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 primary up at Anschutz, professor and all that good stuff that uh, he deals with a lot of pathology. He sees the decrements. He doesn't see the active seniors or, or older adults, older Americans. Yeah. Yes. I I think we ought to encourage the insurance companies too. I, I have a I have a feeling with doctors, PAs, nurses, whatever, insurance companies primarily. They're pushing us over the foot. They really don't have time for us the way the younger doctors, nurses are. That's my take on it. And I've had several surgeries, several broken bones. I've been in the hospital. Uh, insurance companies are controlling what's going on in the hospital, the doctor's offices. Having, yeah. Having been a Medicare provider and dealing with all the insurances, you're absolutely right. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, thank you for your comments, those two comments, because I just realized there's a huge influence then of legal and financial consequence. Um, it's really easy for a PA to say, oh, you're old, like, you got to go do these things. Why? Well, you're going to get sued. Okay, well, like that kind of thing. Bad, but well, it, you might have it, thought it, that. And the same thing also with the insurance companies. I think they're going to take the square. Good point. Yes, one more, and then I'm going to ask you your, your, uh, your view on what you see on the media, the films. Uh, 
um, et cetera, and so forth, or cards, greeting cards, and so forth. Go ahead. Um, my experience with doctors sometimes, uh, at least two examples. I went with my dad for um, evaluation. The doctor talked to me, not my dad. I went a couple of, uh, years ago when I was having um, some back issues. And one of my daughters wanted to go and hear what was going on. Yeah. So she went with me again. The doctor talked to my daughter, not to me. Yeah. Or in sometimes a patronizing tone of voice. Yeah. yeah. Sort of like baby talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, I interjected. Gene, <laughs> <laughs> I just, to me, ageism. Is more than just health care. It, it, it's mandatory retirement for pilots at age 65. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary and I saw, uh, what did we see last night? This is a minute. <laughs> What's the comedy? The comedy. Well, it was the comedy where. Um, um, Blind date was a right arranged for the professor and his uh, single son, and she arrived. Frazier. Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> Short term memory loss. That's a great example. Just a momentary effort to the rescue. And uh, make a long story short, uh, Frazier, the professor, very astute, eloquent, sophisticated. She was a gorgeous female. And uh, but who run the who won the attention when the single son came back to the apartment? She went for the younger son. Um, so dating, um, and I was I was referring to Maggie Coon and also uh, Miriam, the book uh, about dating and so forth. The young guy who seems to win the prize. And in American culture, now we have to look at the culture because in other cultures that we had our, our in-house uh, St. A's uh, anthropologist here, in some, in, in some cultures, to be old is to, revere, to be revered, like the old crone, the medicine woman, revered. The wrinkles are badges of honor and, yeah. and survival and wisdom. And, so in our culture and what you see in cars and what you see in the media and what you see in dress, hairstyles, so much a part of our identity, how you wear your hair, don't wear your hair, etc. cetera. So what do you think? Is ageism, besides what has already been said, uh, an issue like sexism and racism? Is it one of the, one of the most subtle seductive dances and most difficult to pin down because of the dynamics. And that's why I think we need to start a little bit on this, Steve, before we look at some of the antecedents as to why we have ageism, perhaps. But what's been your take on this? Have you ever been discriminated about, besides what's been mentioned here, by, by, by virtue of age? Yes. Go ahead. But, After my yeah. first year of teaching, my first year of teaching in Cherry Creek, um, I was 36 to 37. I got a late start. And uh, come April, they said, uh, we're not inviting you back. And I said, why is that? And, they, and he said, well, if you were 23 or 24, I, I, I might give you another year. But since you're, what, 36 or 37, I'm not sure another year would help. <laughs> oh, my God. So then I went to Jefferson County, and Carol Irwin, the director of human relations, she said, that's Cherry Creek. She said, they have a reputation for eating their young. Oh, she said, this is back in 2006, no, no, 1996. So after one year of teaching, that was, was kind of like. Okay. Comment over here by. Yeah, another comment. I know this is ripe for action. Yes. Yes. I just wondered if you were aware of the organization called Changing the Narrative. Yes, go ahead. Just tell the tell folks. What is it? Well, their focus is just that changing the narrative on how we see ourselves and talk about ourselves, as well as with uh, greeting cards that tend to poke fun at older people. <laughs> that is their focus. 
Yeah, oftentimes aging is a, a source of um, the butt of jokes. Uh, um, uh, how, how are older people portrayed in the movies for the most part, would you yeah. say, TV? How, Gene, yes. I'm thinking of when movies and older folks, I think of grumpy old men, grumpy old, men. Um, <laughs> old folks robbing banks and ha-ha, that's really funny when they get together yeah. and rob banks. Uh, but there's no, are there any TV shows about featuring older people as the stars? I can't Tomlin. think of any right Lily now. Tomlin and Jane Fonda did a really yeah. good series on Netflix. Jane that's Fonda? True. That's a yes. good one. Huh? Hanoi Jane, as she used to be called. Her. <laughs> yeah. 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 And she was so also... General, everything's focused toward young people. Yeah. 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 Well, that's true with uh, the, the, the latest iPad, the latest technology, the newer models, the older models. What's the cultural message here? What's the narrative that, and you're right, the Rose Foundation, Rose Foundation is sponsoring that changing the narrative because we've, we've been patterned and conditioned. Uh, new and young is best, old has had its day. And that's, that's that needs to be a part of the backdrop when you discuss an article like this. Very fine article. Wouldn't dispute anything that's being said here. But the majority of aspects being influenced in part by a culture that doesn't necessarily, to begin with, venerate the importance of old and the significance of such. And that's, since we're focusing on cognitive abilities, that seems to be, Steve, my, my, my take, and I think some of the reactions here, uh, too old to govern, too old to govern, that we need to address and spend a little time here on the cognitive aspects of aging and some of the stereotypes that we've been brought up with and conditioned to and by our culture, as well as how we see ourselves. And uh, for that reason, for that reason, we need to address uh, uh, the twin sister here, anyway, gerontophobia. Ger what is gerontophobia? Because that's the, gen that's the genesis and the origins of some of this ageism here. That, what is gerontophobia? Fear of getting old. Fear of getting old. Yeah. Fear of aging. Fear, fear, of, of, fear of aging. Fear of being around people who have the decrements of aging or show aging as if it's uh, somehow contagious or <laughs> depressing. That's why it's so hard to get people to work in the field of geriatrics. It's a challenge. Geriatric medicine, if, if you if you know the medical scene, you have to have fellowships in order to certainly entice people to go into that area. The fear of aging and death. Analytical psychologists say that's the basis of much anxiety. The fear of death that we all have. We, we can we can fake it, <laughs> we can deny it. Deny it. Is it optional? What's that? Is it optional? <laughs> well, the reason I'm saying that is, if that be the case, now if, if you if you say, well, yes, Dawson, you're not you're not on what feeling. If that be the case, that's a part of ageism. We have a built-in, we have a some built-in blockage in the uh, in the system. The drain is blocked, so to speak. Um, are you following me here? Yeah. yeah. Um, the ages, the ageism can be very seductive. You can lowball it for old people. After all, you know, you've got the senior edition, you've got the junior edition. Um, compassion. Remember the book for, for persons who have codependency issues, the women who love too much? You can love too much when it comes to caring for being concerned for elders. Too much love, not enough love, watering down. This is what seniors, one size fits all. Um, not keeping the bar up where experienced people have, wherein they have much to offer. Fear of death, being around people who show that they're aging. That's why we fake it. That's why we have beauty products anti-aging creams. <laughs> we've got a, we've got somebody with a professional beautician background. So 
uh, fair and women and, and men too now, men go to salons. I go to an old fashioned barber shop, but uh, <laughs> be that as it may, the, the newer thrust is, is, is in that direction. Vicki. Um, there is a book written by Richard Rohr. I'm not crazy about Richard Rohr, but Richard Rohr's book called Falling Upwards. I don't know if anybody's read that book or not, but in that book, he talks about um, second half living. And um, it's, it's a very productive book about a, a positive second half living and what, because of our age and because of our wisdom and because of experience, how, how, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think? How, uh, how successful we can be in, in leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember that Adam Hamilton used to say, don't think just because you've retired that you are retiring. Because he said, I'm looking at you people as retired people, as uh, step up people to take responsibility in helping in different positions in this church. And so he would speak very positively to that age group of people about what was expected of them and be active. And don't think that just because you've retired that you're going to sit back and do nothing. We need you. You know, and this second half living gives a lot of really positive input as to where you can be very resourceful and useful, you know, to younger generations. So I recommend it, even though I don't. Oh, this is a hot topic. Yeah. We have 13 days left in the board. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't think you're done. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. This this reminds me of what my financial advisor always said. You don't retire from something, you retire to yeah. something. Yeah. Let, let's, let, let's get some substance behind this. These are these are I, I this is a hot topic, Steve, that uh, uh, and you know I can wander off in the open pasture here, so I have to try to keep focus and keep me focused there, uh, Johnny. Um, okay. yeah. Gene, I also want to give our Zoomers a chance to yes. weigh in here sure. without feeling right. like they're interrupting us. If anybody on Zoom would like to make a comment or ask a question, please go right ahead. Just speak up or forever hold your peace. Why did, why did, we, why did we bring Peyton Manning in from Indianapolis? He was, danger, he was damaged goods. But what did Peyton Manning, uh, for your football fans? Experience. Experience? The winner. It was winter. He also had, he was pieced together his neck, you know, he could have gone any minute. Um, yeah. Tim Kebo didn't make it, but it, it was the All American boy, you know, he was two times All American, muscles, he was bigger. He didn't make it, but Manning had, he could read plays, he had experience. Um, Mary's uh, wife, her father was, was deaf. He uh, was bedridden, but he was a consummate chess player, am I correct? And he used to challenge young people and beat them, beat the socks off, because he, he had, now here we get to the cognitive piece. I want to get some substance besides, behind some of the sentiment and some of the feelings here, fact and fiction here. He has what, under intelligence up here, crystallized intelligence. What is crystallized intelligence? Anybody have an inkling of what that is? That's a Peyton Manning type of mind here. Or some would say Joe Biden. I know Harvey, uh, I had a nice conversation with Harvey recently. I think he considers Biden having that crystallized intelligence. What is crystallized intelligence? Don't know. Does, it mean, what is it, does it mean stopping where it's at? I mean, and not learning new stuff? Well, what, what you've learned, what you've done, what you've practiced, all the combination of plays, reading defenses, uh, strategizing. You don't have to be Mr. Muscle Man, but if you got the mind, you know, you may have an arthritic body, but if you have the mind, I, I, I used to play competitive tennis big time, took it more seriously than I should have. But I can remember some tournaments uh, being somewhat blown off the court, even though I had a, a stronger serve and a better forehand, etc. and so forth. Some of these great foxes 
would outdo me here because of strategy and knowing how to play my weakness, especially on clay courts. Oh my Lord, the tennis players out there. So crystallized intelligence means if you've done something, you've done something well, Kissinger would, even in his 80s, they, the people would call him in to give his slant. But do you like Kissinger or not? He was certainly one of the great strategists all the time as far as the Secretary of State. Uh, even with his deficiencies, what, what he lost, more people have had to begin with. <laughs> so, um, so that's crystallized. Fluid. Fluid is something you have to pick up quickly, but you have not had the experience of seeing all the plays. Now, I, I sound partisan here, but, you know, Biden has run a lot of plays. He's had 30 years of foreign relations experience. He knows per the personalities. He's seen how certain countries have responded. He knows their history, the backdrop. He's got a lot of play set uh, calls that he can call audibles on when it comes to making policy decisions. He does have a bit of an arthritic frame. He probably, Gail, could have, could have benefited from some of your therapy. I'm picking on you, Gail, but I know a little about your background. How you treated people who have such you know, a little bit of rigidity. And since I'm embarrassing you right now, I let the folks know what you do in the way of an exercise program oh, each week. Yeah. She's, she's an inspiration for me. Yeah. What is it? How many times do you go to the gym? What are some of your bicycle trips that you've taken? I need to be around people like that because that jacks me up a little bit. I begin to think, oh, yeah. Have, have any of you heard Sister Madonna? Uh, Sister Madonna, do you know about Sister Madonna? She, she's a nun. I think she's a Carmelite, and she does triathlons. The reason I know this is in the so-called adult community, that's a euphemistic <laughs> term that's used for uh, what some people call retirement communities. I was talking to uh, one of my neighbors who had competed over in Hawaii with Sister Madonna. She's in her 90s. You know, you swim, you bike, you run. And it's a little bit like Miriam. Miriam does some of that as you're reading the, the book there. It's important to be around people like this because you're influenced by the, 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 the crowd you run with, the group you run with. That's what I lecture a little bit to my primary financials. You see pathologies on a regular basis, the decrements, geriatric. You don't see so much the other side, the super jocks. I had a program for, from a metropolitan church here in Denver that I operated right at a frail elder program, elder care, and a wellness program, biking, tai chi, homeopathic alternative medicine, et cetera, and so forth, and then caring for those who are on the spectrum of frailty. I think it's very important when you're talking about aging and elders that you keep categories such as this in mind. The pathologies, the geriatric, and the very active senior population that we we uh, we certainly we certainly have around us. Enough on that. Let me get back to the cognitive. Yes. Could I just make an observation while I'm thinking about sure. a positive image uh, on television recently was The Bachelor TV show. Has anybody watched The Bachelor? What do you think of that, Steve? I'm glad you brought that up. I've had conversations. After, yes, go ahead. Let me explain it, Gene. Sure. After many years of that show being young people in their 20s, bachelors and bachelorettes finding love, they finally this season had a 72-year-old man bachelor and uh, ladies in their 70s and so it got a lot of attention for very positive um, look at age at older adults dating and talking about love and uh, anybody here watch that some, some folks did what did you think about it was it good it made me a little squirmy i, I felt squirmy I why that they were exploited. exploited how why exploited 
Well, people, I think a lot of people were fascinated by the idea because it was unusual. Uh-huh. And so it was not out of kindness or a desire. I mean, some people were inspired by it, uh -huh. but just enough to make me think I wouldn't. Well, my reaction to your word unusual, I live at Windcrest, and, and there are 2,000 people there who are interacting yeah. all the time. Yeah. Some of them, you know, are sitting on the bench at hugging and caressing, <laughs> and I walk by and say, get a room, and they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not that unusual for older people to still have... I'm going to have to interject because I say I'm running out of time and wandering too much. Let's get back to aging. Sure. The fluid you can lose. The crystallize you, you tend not to. A developmental aging. The, there's research, uh, Cohen gets at some of this, that the older you get, the more creative you become. That's why some of our great composers and artists, some of their best works are later in life. Now, why is that? <laughs> Low ball seniors or those who are. Uh, on the lower end of the spectrum, as opposed to high functioning seniors, uh, have what they call developmental uh, capacity here to compensate, to compensate for neural degeneration or loss by developing, and, and Cron makes quite a case of this, developing new neurons by vigorous mental activity and lifestyle adaptation. So in other words, the older you get, if you stay active cognitively and physically and, and take care of your body, uh, the prefrontal cortex, which is used primarily by low functioning elders and younger people, is compensated by the development of new neurons. That's the good news. So just because you're chronologically old, and there again, there's differential aging. You can be physical old, uh, cognitively old, physically old, mentally old, socially old, but you can be young at the same time. So when you go to a high school reunion or a college reunion, as you know, and as, as we all say, we'll see our classmates aging differentially. Oh, you're just like you were back when you were a sophomore back at PHS. Or he looks or she looks so old. Differential aging. So we all aging in different ways. The research out of the University of Chicago years back, and it has been refuted, is that with a given cohort that right, is in a group of elders 10 years usually cohorts are thing, thought of as 10 years but there's more diversity heterogeneity in an older cohort than there is in a younger cohort now why is that because of experience events um, the things that uh, we've experienced there's greater diversity in other words one size does not fit all so when you're senior packaging for those who are involved in, in programming for older persons, and again, what do you prefer as a way of a designation? You like to be called a senior? You know, that's a popular term. An elder, an older American, older adult, a jury. <laughs> um, um, one size does not fit all. You have to have a diversity, you have to have options. So if you believe in differential aging, in the sense that there's greater heterogeneity, there's so many options within the elder community. I don't like senior, but I certainly like the discount, even though so I used to, even though I used to rail in the classroom with my students and say you should have it only on the basis of need, not because of age. But that's the first thing I look for anymore when I go into the and they give us discount as I am. But anyway, the diversity, the variety. But the good news, and I'll leave with this, and then if you have a minute or two, we can we talk about this. The capacity is to grow stronger cognitively. So if chronologically, two people can be quite different age-wise, yes. which is now uh, which is now 70, 70, 
70, 76 for females and 73 for males. It's dipped a bit because of COVID, just slightly. Um, the great diversity of stereotyping a population which is so diverse and can function like Gail and others and Sister Madonna and, and Mary <laughs> in so many different ways. Even Peyton Manning, I mean, he was an old man out there on the, on, the, uh, on the football field. One has stereotyping, stereotyping, because of the cultural backdrop and the influence in the media and the reinforcement. Yes. We depend, well, he's 81. Bernie Sanders had a great draw for the young people, did he not? Oh, yeah. oh my Lord, yes. Was it, it wasn't age, it didn't say age there. They saw the message. Uh, they, they were they were attracted to the cause. Uh, it's, it's, it's very complex, isn't it? Very challenging. Steve, final comments. We're, yes, we're about out of time, but we want to take a comment from Jim and then Don. Uh, okay. One thing that hasn't been discussed, and it's, it's a little bit late in the, in the hour to bring this up, but I wanted to just mention it, is that while the median age uh, is somewhere around 38, or isn't that what you said? I would imagine that the median age for churches, and, and this church included, is somewhere at least above 60. And I think that really does uh, impact uh, how the church presents itself, the programs, and, and everything else. Uh, and I think probably is deserving of an awful lot more attention than, uh, than what we're doing. <laughs> do, do you mean that we don't do a gym? Do you mean we don't do enough for aging or? No, I think, I just think our, I don't know. I think it impacts our, the face that we present to society. Mm -hmm. I think that churches as a whole are, are presenting an old face to society. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and that programs and uh, sermons and music um, is, are, is, you know, we're, we're trying to change our music in this church, but boy, there's an awful lot of heel dragging on that. Yes. Uh, and and there's an awful lot of other stuff that, that talks about how, how churches present themselves to society that is much, much different than the rest of society. Thank you. Well, this is a good segue into next week. Our guest speaker will be Lana Banbury, our executive director of operations who runs all the business and pretty much everything in the church except the preaching and the counseling, that kind of thing. So Lana can talk to us about the demographics and the communications and the image and those kind of things. So that'll be great. We'll bring that up with her. Okay. Any final quick comments before we go? Gene, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. Good topic. Lord be with all of us, old folks and young folks. Amen. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Susan. Bye, Doug.